What's up, guys? It's been a crazy, crazy week in some of the groups I've been in on Facebook where people are getting kicked out of groups for copying someone, people accusing other people of stealing their color patterns, which have been around for, I don't know, 50 years. Like, it's just crazy. And I see this in a lot of groups with a lot of, you know, makers and craftsmen, not just lure makers, although lure makers tend to get a little more upset about it, which is hilarious because everything we make is a knockoff of something else. There's been very few original lures made in the past, I don't know, 30 years probably, right? Chatterbait, maybe. And then everybody knocked that off, right? Yes, they have a patent. Yes, you could argue that their particular version of the Chatterbait is better than everybody else's, but it doesn't keep anybody else from really going out there and, and making one. Um, I would argue the more powerful thing that the people at Chatterbait, not at Chatterbait, <laughs> Zoom owns, or no, Z-Man owns them now, but the, the guy that invented the Chatterbait, the, what he did that was so great was he trademarked the term Chatterbait and Chatterbait became like Kleenex, right? That is what is so powerful. So no one talks about, I don't wanna say no one, but very few people talk about throwing a bladed jig unless they're sponsored by someone who doesn't have the Chatterbait trademark, but everybody talks about fishing a Chatterbait. And so when you go to the store, when you tell your buddies, yeah, I caught him on a Chatterbait, you go to the store, you look, you see Chatterbait, that's what you're gonna buy, right? That is way more powerful than any patent that he got there. Uh, because again, you look, there's a bazillion bladed jigs out there. Slobber knocker, you know, everybody's got one, dude. Like, it's crazy. So he didn't stop anybody from copying his design, really. Um, but he developed that name and that name became synonymous with that style of lure. And that has way more value than the patent. So I say that all to say, you know, you cannot, if you are doing anything remotely useful or that people are buying, someone somewhere is gonna knock it off. And there's very little you can do to prevent that from happening, right? You can go to China, you can get any lure made you want. You can go to the bug molds guys in the Ukraine and they will make you any mold you want, knock off of this or that or otherwise, right? Because by and large, right, out of the United States, most bait companies are not doing international patents, EU patents, things like that. So they have no, there's nothing legally wrong with them creating knockoffs, right? You could say it's morally wrong, but anytime in business that you start getting morals involved, you're gonna not do very well because not everybody has the same morals that you do. So how do you, as a maker, you know, kind of counteract that? There's a fish right there. Bro. Oh, dang it. Dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. Did I set that too fast? I don't know, man. I felt like I gave it a pause, but maybe not. Leave a comment if you think I set too fast or too slow. This frog fishing is pretty new to me, man. Uh, let's see that. An instant replay. <laughs> you know, when I was in tech, you know, everybody was knocking up everybody. Like, that's just how it works in tech. Um, there's very few patents that are, that stop anybody from doing anything. Software patents are incredibly difficult to get nowadays. You know, back when I started in tech, they were, everybody was patenting everything, right? Like doing X over the internet was like a standard patent for a while until the, the patent office was like, yeah, no, dude, let's, let's stop that, that's stupid. Um, so there's a term that I don't like that was kind of coined in the tech world called eat your babies or uh, kill your cash cow, right? And it's a concept that basically if you don't kill your own product, someone else will kill it for you. And I think the, the most glaring example of this is Apple and the iPod, right? Apple was making a bazillion dollars selling an iPod, yet they basically killed that product by making an iPhone and making it play MP3s. Like there's no iPods are made anymore. People don't want iPods. MP3 players are pretty much gone out of existence and Apple killed it. Now, if Apple didn't kill it, someone else would have come along and killed it and Apple would have been out of business. And that's kind of the point of kill your cash cow, right? 
you should be the one that puts your cash cow out to pasture because then you will benefit, reap the rewards, right? So if you're making, I don't know, man, like, I don't want to get too personal and direct with anybody, but if you're making a, you know, I'm just going to say a product that helps people make baits, right? Air vices, stirs, injection machines, hand injectors, you name it. Someone is going to come along and say, I can make that for a few dollars cheaper. I can make it slightly better. I can do X, Y, and Z, right? I'm in, not in the United States. My labor costs are lower. I can make it for a few dollars less. And so you need to be constantly thinking about that with your product, right? If you have a, a high-end product, you need to think about, okay, how can I make this cheaper and bring down the price and come out with, you know, a mid-tier product or even a low-tier product, right? So for the person who doesn't want to spend $125 on injector, can I get an injector that is slightly less great for, you know, $90, right? And still make money, right? You still want to make money. You don't want to just discount your high-end product. Right? So that's what you always need to be thinking about. No one is going to say, oh, so-and-so is already doing that. I'm not going to do that. If they have the ability to create something, they're going to create it. So you as fish, you as a maker, as a business owner, always have to be thinking about that and how you can come down with your product line or, you know, consequently go up, right? If there's, if you're making a low end product, how can I make that product slightly better charge more and kill the kill the lower end market, right? I think lower end market is always going to be there as entry level, but you know, come out with a new product, right? There, I see a lot of people, they make a product, they get it in distribution and they're like, okay, I'm just going to keep cranking out this product. And they don't think about anything else except cranking out that product. And then they get mad when someone else cranks out a similar product. Like that's, that's a losing mentality, man. That's not how it works. So today, Sit down, look at your product line, think about what you can make better, what you can make cheaper, and start rolling out those changes. And don't get mad when people steal your shit, because people are always gonna steal your shit, man. Take care, tight lines. <laughs>